OK, you're in Microsoft Excel and you want to return the sum of all matches when you're using XLOOKUP. I'm going to look at three totally different examples. So if the first examples don't match what you're trying to do, please do watch the other examples. So my first example, I want to be able to choose a player here and the total of their score in this table will be returned in this cell. Now, in this scenario, I would not use XLOOKUP. There are two options that you can use. The first one uses the filter function. First argument in the filter function is array, and that's the range of values that you want to return or eventually sum up. So in our example, that's all of the scores. Comma, include is the next argument, and that's got to be a logical test. So we want to say only include these scores if the name in column A is equal to the name that we're displaying in E2. So my logical test would be this range here, A2 to A12 equals E2. And then I can just close the bracket, press enter. And what it does is return all of the scores that Barbara has achieved, 453, 245, and 781. And what we need to do is sum up those scores. So if I put filter within the sum function, it will then give me a total. Now, another way to do this is just to use sum if. And with sum if, you first of all need to specify the range of cells that you're going to apply your criteria to. So I'm going to apply my criteria to the player column, comma. Then you need to specify your criteria. So my criteria is stored here in E3, comma. And then you need to specify your sum range. So where is the range of cells that you want to add up? Well, that's the scores. So if I close the bracket, press enter, and then I chose Barbara, you can see I've got the same answer as I got using sum and filter. So either method works. Let's look at example two. So completely different example here. What I want to be able to do is choose a name in this drop down list and for my formula to add up all the sales for that individual. Now for this, I would use XLOOKUP. So my lookup value will be the name I'm storing in this cell, B10, comma, and I'll be looking up these names in this row. My return array will be all of the sales amounts. Then I close the bracket and I press enter. And you can see what it's done here is returned all of Barbara's sales amounts. You can see these figures here match these figures here. And if I changed the name here to Ben, it would return all Ben's sales amounts. So what I then need to do is sum up these values and it will give me a total. If I change the name, it will give me a total for that person. Now I can also do this for the years. So again, equals X lookup. My lookup value would be the year description here, comma. My lookup array in this example would be this column here. And my return array again is all of these cells that contain sales values. Close the bracket, press enter, and that returns a horizontal array. And I need to add up those values. And then I get a total for that particular year. If I change the year, it gives me a new total. Okay, let's move on to example three. Now, totally different example again. Now, you can see that a bonus has been given to these salespeople. You either get a A rated bonus, which is worth £100, or a B rated bonus, which is worth £150, or you don't get a bonus at all. So I want to work out the total bonus at the end of the week for all of these salespeople. Now to do this, I'm going to use the sum if function. And the range in this example is going to be this column here, or these cells here, A10 to A11, and I do need to lock that, comma. My criteria 
is going to be the row containing the bonus information for that individual salesperson. So B4 to F4, comma. And my sum range is this column, the bonus column. And I also need to lock that. So if I close the bracket and press enter, you can see the sum if function in Excel 365 anyway, spills the results into surrounding sales. So it's £100 for an A rated bonus, then nothing for Tuesday, £150 on Wednesday, nothing on Thursday, and then £100 on Friday. So I need to sum those up. So I can sum that up just using the sum function. And then all I need to do is just copy these down. Now, if that doesn't work for you, if you're not in Excel 365, then you can do something very similar. You want this same sum if formula, but instead of putting it within the sum function, put it within sum product. And that should then work. Gives me the same answers, but that should work in earlier versions of Excel. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you next video.